This is to review the three methods that we learned that allow us to apply columns in three different ways. So the first method was to set your own section breaks in order to isolate a section so that you could apply columns only to this one area here. So in order to do that, you position the insertion point to the left of this M, which is the first letter of the paragraph, and click the Layout tab, Breaks, Section Break, Continuous. Then you go to the beginning where the next section would start, and you put in the Layout tab, Breaks, Section Break, Continuous. Now, they can be very small, but it's over here at the end of the document. Sometimes if you zoom in enough, the name will show up, but this one's just too small to display the name. So now that we have a section break at the beginning of this paragraph and at the end of this paragraph, we can just be clicked anywhere in the section and we can apply the columns. Method number two, and I'm going to remove this section break here and do method number two. If we select the text, we can then apply the columns. And the trick with this one is that it will make the section breaks for you. So select the text first, go to columns, and make that two. And you will see that, in this case, it's very hard to see. You can see this section break after the word document, but I cannot see the other section break, although I know it's there. Uh, it's just that tiny, tiny blue lines. So, so that we can see it better, I'm going to switch this. I'm going to switch this to three columns. There. Now we can see the section break better right here and the beginning one right here. So that's method two, is you select, create the columns, section breaks are done for you. The third method is to position your insertion point at the beginning of the section you're about to make and go into Layout Columns, More Columns, and this time we'll do two, and apply this, uh, this column settings to this point forward. Now that is going to put the rest of the text into three columns. And perhaps we didn't want this text in the end to be in there. So this method, you may have to do another uh, set of round, another round. So the insertion point at the beginning, layout, columns, two from this point forward and then you would have to put the cursor at the beginning of this red text and switch it back to one column from this point forward. So uh, three methods. Uh, this one is probably the easiest. If you want to have any more precision, you do have to use the More Columns dialog box. And for example, you can put a line between these columns here and say, OK, it's applied to this section. And then you have a line. I'll come down to this set here, which is 
a section that has two columns. And if I have the dialog box, I can actually change that, for example, to th this option, which is going to give us one, uh, well, two columns, but the first column is going to be much narrower than the second column. Say OK, and you can see that's what we have. This is our first section, which is much more narrow than our second section, our second column. This space in here, we have some control over that. Again, if you go into the dialog box, this number here for spacing, I'm going to adjust it. You will only see the here on the preview in the dialog box. So I'm going to open that up a little bit. Or sorry, I'm narrowing it down and say OK. And you can see it's much more narrow here. And when I click OK, this is much closer together. And just notice that if I put text right by the ruler, you can see that this little dark area is now our gutter. And if I come back in and make that spacing bigger this time, look at the preview, it'll be open wider. And watch this dark area in the ruler. And when I say OK, you can see that I made the gutter much bigger by using that setting in the dialog box.